Good evening and welcome to the news of Ashuruk TV. Today's stories include The Committees for Empowerment Dismantling in the States is to activate soon. Inflation rates reach 98% in April 2020. Registration of new 146 COVID-19 infections and one fatality. The government delegation for security arrangements headed by Lieutenant General Khalid Abdin Ashami, head of the Security Committee and the delegation of armed struggle movements, the Darfur track today, continued their negotiation session at the Salam Rotana Hotel in Khartoum and the Crown Hotel in Juba via video conference. The two sides discussed the number of the remaining issues from the security arrangements file in preparation for reaching an agreement on them before the date set by the mediation to sign the final peace agreement. Chairman of Sudan Congress Party, Engineer Omar Diger, has reiterated his party's support to ongoing peace process in Juba with the Revolutionary Front, expressing hope it will lead to justice, sustainable and comprehensive peace in the country. Diger affirmed the serious desire to reach an agreement in the remaining issues, including the security arrangements, system of government, distribution of wealth and power sharing in transitional authority. He called on all parties to make a breakthrough in the negotiation track with Sudan's peoples, led by Comrade al Hilo and Sudan Liberation Movement of Abdul Wahid Noor. The Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources, Professor Yasser Abbas, affirmed that the technical site in the negotiations of the Renaissance Dam between Sudan, Ethiopia and Egypt is the most agreed upon aspect with a rate of about 95% of its points. The minister pointed out that the technical aspects are related to the filling operations during the regular years and during the dry years, indicating that most of the technical issues were agreed upon except the minor details. In his response to reporters' questions following the meeting, the minister noted that the presence of representatives from South Africa, the United States and the European Union have only a supervisory role and they did not play any other role. The first evacuation flights for the 450 Sudanese volunteers of the Law of Residence in the state of Kuwait arrived in Khartoum Airport. An official source at Khartoum Airport indicated to Suna the completion of all arrangements in Sudan to receive the stranded, who will arrive via three flights after applying the required health procedures upon their departure from Kuwait International Airport, with the presence of both the competent security and health authorities from the Kuwaiti side. He pointed out that due to the quarantine in Kuwait, they will be treated like Sudanese students who have returned from the Chinese city of Ohan, where they will leave after passing the initial health examination. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs noted in a statement that all the procedures were taken in full cooperation between the Kuwaiti authorities and members of the Sudan's embassy, who in return coordinated with all the competent authorities for the return of the Sudanese who violated the residence law to the country. The Civil Aviation Authority affirmed that the Khartoum International Airport, as an executive body, is ready to receive the stranded concerning the measures taken in case of pandemics. The Assistant General Manager for Technical Affairs said that the authority waits the decisions of the Higher Committee for Health Emergencies after the completion of the arrangements of other related circles. The chairman of the Transitional Sovereign Council of States, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, recommended that states should continue to work to remove empowerment and dismantle of all the groups working outside the known frameworks in the states, calling on the state's governors to tighten coordination between the center and the states. The governor's caretaker of the River Nile State, Major General Abdul Mahmoud Hamad Hussein, said that the head of the Transitional Sovereign Council was briefed during his meeting on the overall situations in the states, especially the people's livelihood, other issues and urgent concerns. Major General Abdul Mahmoud Hamad Hussein noted in a press statement following the meeting that the chairman of the Sovereign Council recommended the continuing of work in removing empowerment and dismantling all groups that operate outside the known frameworks. Sudanese General Prosecutor announced that they dug up mass graves of the students who were killed by the Sudanese army in 1998 during their attempt to escape from military training camp located in the Al Alafoun area. 
the students were being prepared to be sent to South Sudan to involve in the civil war against the Sudan People's Liberation Army, the SPLA. The escape attempt of the students came as a result of rejecting their demand to spend the eight holidays with their families. He said that the investigation on the consequences of the incident started to reveal who caused the massacre during the ousted regime rule. On the issue of killing six people in Al-Ubayyid, the capital city of North Kurdufan state, by military personnel a few months ago, the general prosecutor affirmed that the judiciary authorities in Al-Ubayyid are dealing with the case. Education and health ministries have announced the continuation of the arrangements for holding the basic school certificate examinations with guarantees for pupils' safety inside the 1,435 centers. The director of training department in Khartoum State Health Ministry, Dr. Mohamed Mamoun, revealed a plan and a clear vision for the provision of sterilizers, masks and the requested protection means prior to set date for the exams in accordance with the health regulations and directives to avoid COVID-19 outbreak. Director of Basic School Stage Hamza Al Fahal said the revision lessons have already started via Khartoum State TV. Reminding headlines Negotiating delegations discuss remaining issues in security arrangements. Irrigation Minister 95% of technical aspects of ERD agreed upon. First group of Sudanese stranded in Kuwait arrives country. That was everything from Shuruk TV. Thank you for following and see you tomorrow.